my official prediction for Vitor Belfort Evander Holyfield taking Vitor. I don't know that I would have said that to you guys a day ago. What happened? What? Well, here, allow me to back up because you can probably relate to this. You can probably relate to thinking Vitor got dealt from the bottom of the deck and showed major courage even stepping into this. I did. I was impressed. Because if you look at it from Vitor's standpoint, where size does matter, not to mention he's already taken a risk going to a sport that isn't his. And we can talk about the the Olympics in 1996 that he allegedly was on the process of trying out to compete for. It's a long time ago. This is a different sport, man. This isn't the one Vitor did. Okay, so credit. Credit Vitor, right out of the gate. But then stepping in against Oscar De La Hoya. All right, I've got my marching orders. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's who this is. Here's what he's doing to prepare. Get a good eye on this guy. 185 pounds. He gets called, Vitor gets called, a week prior to the weigh-ins. And he's informed, not only is it not 185, and I'll use MMA terms. I realize boxing works in different terms, but let me use MMA. Not only is it not middleweight, it's not even going to be light heavyweight. It's going to be heavyweight. Have you ever heard of, even heard of anybody agreeing one week prior to weigh-ins to change weight classes by two weight classes? I don't think anyone's even been offered that, let alone done it, right? So again, credit Vitor. Vitor's going to go fight a very unknown. We don't know what Evander's been up to. We know that Evander's known for a while that he's going to compete. Evander was of the state of mind six months ago that he was going to be fighting Mike Tyson. So Evander's preparing. He's preparing. He's a grossly different weight class than what Vitor was ready to do. For Vitor to make 185 pounds, he's changing his body. He's sacrificing He's cut down on the calories and, and, and he's upped the workouts, put everything in stop, head back up. You can relax. Don't worry about the weight. Okay. Not a lot of details. The phenom says, yes, full credit Vitor. I assume Evander, just like you guys, all I can do is see the Evander in my head, right? Just like an accountant. You're only as good as the information you're given. That's what I have on Evander. Evander's going to kill this guy. For Vitor, full respect that you're even going out there, he's going to get destroyed. And the odds makers agreed Evander comes in a two-to-one favorite. Now, the weigh-ins are a short period of time away. The fight this weekend, must admit I don't know if it's Saturday or Sunday. I would assume Saturday, but some boxing's been going on on Sunday, right? The Pauls have been fighting on Sunday. So it's this weekend. We'll leave it at that. I can assure you the two-to-one favorite, Evander Holyfield, will not enter the ring the favorite. What happened? Well, if you haven't seen it, media day. That's what happened. Media day for this very meager event took place in a dirty small boxing gym somewhere, which in all fairness to a boxing gym is exactly what you want, but not a whole lot of space, which means not a whole uh, lot of media. means it's not very well attended. Takes place anyway. They got a camera, good enough for me. Evander does an interview that is uh, troubling and difficult in terms of the speech pattern. So he's showing some real signs that we've seen, some of the sad signs that we've seen from our boxing heroes. But then he does an open workout. Now, the open workout did not consist of anything redeemable. There was not a redeeming quality within his power. There was not a redeeming quality within his footwork. There was not a redeeming quality within his speed. To do what you know is focus mitts. And that's a great, you can call it focus mitts, no problem. Another term for that is you can call it running the numbers. Because focus mitts will all be done by numbers no matter who the coach is. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, five, one, two, five, two, one, two, five, foo, slip, slip, seven, eight, one, two. I mean, you're going to run the numbers. And your coach is going to call them and you're going to do it like a beautiful dance, right? So it's wonderful to watch Floyd Mayweather and Roger Mayweather, just by example, two guys that know each other, two guys that speak the same language. 
It's a, it's a thing of beauty to watch. On your first day of boxing, day one, you could be eight years old, you could be 28 years old. The first day of boxing, you're going to learn a combination called a one, two, three. Your first day, no matter where in your life that is, you will learn a one, two, three. That's a jab, a cross, a hook. One, two, three. Every day of your life in boxing, you will throw the one, two, three. That is one constant that will never, ever change. You will throw a one, two, three on day one, and you will throw it every day thereafter. Okay. Evander finally got to a one, two, three. He started with a one, meaning the jab. He went to a one, two, which meant the jab and the cross. Now, these are as slow as molasses rolling uphill. There was no head movement afterwards. There was nothing redeemable about this, but eventually he did get to the three. Eventually he did get to the three. Now, a number of times when he threw the three, the hook. A number of times he stumbled, and I, re I, I rewinded it to rewatch it because I thought he was throwing a power in, and there's some guys that do. Vitor will break a tremendous rule in striking, which is Vitor will do what's called a march step. If you remember Vitor's fight with Vandalay Silva, might be the greatest single example of the march step that I could give you. But it's where you will a march. You're going to walk him down. Boxing, whatever leg's leading, that leg leads the entire night. It will never not be leading. You will never be square. If your right leg leads and your left leg's behind, that will never, ever change. Won't matter if you're out there for three rounds or 12 rounds. Well, Vitor will break that. And Vitor will step in front to now where when his right leg was in front, now his left leg's in front, and then he'll put the right leg front again, and then the left leg in front again. Marching. It's a march step. Okay. Manny Pacquiao is one of the rare boxers that will also break that rule. He doesn't do it often, but he will do it. And he will step the back leg in front of the front leg. It is that rare guys, that I cannot give you another example. And Evander was doing something like that with the hook. So I kept rewinding. I'm going, okay, I just caught Pacquiao doing that. It was the fight that Pacquiao lost, but I caught him doing it and he was landing the strikes. I was very interested in it. Then I saw Evander doing it from a hook. So I rewind, I watched it again. I rewind, I watched it again. What is he doing? Is he stepping out on that? Is he stepping through that? Is that to add more power? After rewinding and rewatching enough times, I realized he's falling. Evander is falling. He's losing his balance and he's stumbling. It was not a march step. It was not a step through like Pacquiao did or even Vitor does sometimes. It was not to add power. He was falling. When he went to turn his hips to throw the three, the hook, he was falling. It was only a couple of inches, but it happened time and time again bad. This is bad. I, by the way, am not, would not tease Evander Holyfield. This happened. If you missed it, you're not going to miss that Evander, who was a two to one favorite yesterday, will get in the ring, the underdog and possibly sizably, very sizably. This could swing to a four to a four and a half to one favorite in Vitor. Explaining to you why. Now, at the same time as you're seeing and you're observing this, there will, of course, be a piece of you that says, well, is he sandbagging? Was he sandbagging a little bit? That's not a terrible guess. You would have a problem with that in that history is the greatest trajectory to the future, and there was no open workout in the history of Evander Holyfield, including his amateur days, that he sandbagged. That doesn't mean he's not doing it. You still have to consider this was baffling. This was baffling. He's a former world champion. I, Joel, you guys know Joel. Joel and I watched this together. We had breakfast today. And Joel said, well, I, you know, I got to tell you, Chael, because I said, this is, this is confusing to me. That's the word that I used. He goes, yeah, I got to tell you, I'm the same age as him. And if I went and did myths, I think it would look the same. I go, whoa, Joel, I, di I disagree with what you're saying. Yes, you probably would look the same as Evander. You are not a former five-time world champion with an Olympic medal. It would not be confusing if you did it, Joel. It would be, co it's confusing to me to see Evander doing this. Final thought that I'll leave you with on this.
if you think, well, we've got to consider Evander Sandbag. That's a, that, you're stretching, you're beyond stretch. But if you want to consider that, I must tell you, the entire workout was around nine minutes. Now that could be, that could be eight, that could be 12. It was around nine minutes, okay? He was dripping in sweat and exhausted when it ended. If he was sandbagging, neither of those things would be true. He was exhausted when it was ended. He did an interview after the workout. And the huffs and the puffs that were coming as he was trying to catch his breath would clear up any doubt of whether he was holding back. Now, you see why Andy Foster in California has the policies and protocols in place that he has. Real straightforward, the way Andy Foster does it in California. If you are of a certain age, you are going to reserve something called the benefit of the doubt. If you say you can do it and you say you want to do it willingly, I am going to let you try. If you pass a certain time in life, I would never take your opportunity away, but I am going to come out and observe prior to issuing a license. Now we see why that makes a lot of sense. We see that. We see why California resisted. I want to bring that to you only because when California kicked it, there was some pushback, but now you see a full vindication of their athletic commission, of the decision makers, and of the policy. And I went through it in California. That policy kicks in at 40. At 40 years old, hey, look, just straight up, doesn't matter. You can be the champion of the world, doesn't matter. At 40, here's how we're going to do it here. And I went through the steps in the process. And I thought it was silly. I didn't think it pertained. But you got to put the line somewhere, and I get it. I would never disagree. I would never raise an eyebrow again. And you do continue to have to give Vitor credit, right? Because he didn't know this. He didn't know. As much as I would love to take away from Tito Ortiz, the night that Tito went in there to fight Chuck, Tito did not realize I'm in here with a shell. I'm in here with a shell of what used to be, right? He didn't know that. Tito knew I'm pulling up tonight and I'm going to make the walk against a guy who kicked my ass every day in training and beat me in front of the world, not once, but twice. I'm going to walk out there. I'm going to do it anyway. Tito gets credit. Tito gets credit. He went and did his part. Vitor just got armed with some new news. That's still Evander Holyfield. I can sit back and say these things, pound my chest. I'm not about to walk in there with him. I have to sit back and go, hey, now, I saw the way that I think I saw, right? He was tired and he was huffing and puffing and California didn't license him. And here we are, sure, I'm moving up in weight class, but this isn't the same guy. I mean, you're going to have to walk out and take on a guy that whipped everybody's ass you've ever heard of. So Vitor still gets a level of credit I will share with you. The line will change. I'm talking to you in real time. By the time I get this out to you, it will be changed. Will it go as far as a four to a four and a half? Maybe. Maybe. I got a call today from a buddy named Ryan, and he asked me one question, and he said, how do I bet on Vitor? And it wasn't a joke. And I answered the question. Go to DraftKings.com. 